in case you missed it. Hey, did you hear? The bank went under. It's totally closed. No, my savings were in it. Not gonna lie. This is a nightmare for me. For what it's worth, we're all in the same boat, my friend. Saving up to buy a house, maybe that big vacation, retirement down the road, counting on the bank to keep your money safe and growing. Saving can be a good thing, but can you really save for your salvation? Can you have a salvation bank account? If you're trying to build your bank balance with God, the story of Simon the Pharisee offers serious food for thought. Jesus, invited to dinner, is talking with Simon. What happens next shocks everyone. A woman is weeping at Jesus' feet and drying them with her hair. Taking an alabaster jar, she then pours expensive perfume all over his feet. Like the others, Simon is horrified by what he sees. Worst of all, the woman is a well-known sinner. Who was she? Luke never tells us. She is thought by some to be Mary Magdalene. A point of view will follow. See the resource guide at the end. All these narrow streets, the garden, and of course that horrible place where he hung. All these familiar places remind me of him. And the question from the first night keeps stumbling back into my mind. How can I ever show my thanks for what he did for me? I was not always a giving person, but the Lord Jesus changed me. It all began that day I personally encountered him. My life was broken and sad before I met Jesus. The night we met, he gave me something wonderful, something I had never thought possible. The gift from Jesus altered my life forever transformed it really. I wanted to talk privately with Jesus, to tell him I believed in him, but there's always a crowd. Then I heard he'd be having dinner at Simon's house very near to me. I entered and everyone stared at me. I'm quite sure it was because of my reputation. I knew I wasn't welcome, but it didn't matter. I was with Jesus at last and he welcomed me. Then came the moment I'll never forget. He looked into my eyes, my heart really, and he said, you're forgiven. Your faith has saved you. What, what did I feel? I don't know, happy, relieved? My shame was gone. Most of all, I felt an overwhelming gratitude. It was all so much, a, so much of a spur of the moment act. I had this alabaster jar, perfume, I was crying so hard. I desperately wanted to do something for Jesus because he had done everything for me. From that moment, I resolved to model my life on Jesus, giving like him, loving like him. The dinner host, Simon, reacted very differently. Here's his journal entry from that night. I wanted to talk directly with Jesus. There were such wild claims about him. People were thronging to him. Many of my Pharisee friends thought he posed a huge threat. A test was in order. Was he really a prophet? I invited him to dinner along with some of my Pharisee friends. Might as well gain their respect for being a generous host. Now we could all see what this Jesus was really made of. Well, he failed the test, miserably. No prophet would let a woman come and sit anywhere near him, never mind pouring perfume on his feet. You can't forgive people who are just plain guilty. How could Jesus miss so much sin when it was right in front of his eyes? Hopeless. It was worse than we even imagined. What an evening. I had to apologize to everyone after he'd gone. Yet, it was Simon who missed everything. He'd been a Pharisee too long, and they lived by a strict principle. Bank those good deeds. 
they kept track of every deposit in their Salvation Bank account, convinced the growing balance was earning them eternity. In fact, the Pharisees were spiritually bankrupt, but didn't even know it. They didn't see their huge mountain of debt. Sadly, Simon did not know forgiveness. Even after Jesus told the parable about the two debtors, a heart without forgiveness is empty of generosity. He gave Jesus nothing. No kiss of welcome. No cool water to wash his feet. No refreshing oil. Mary deeply felt the Lord's forgiveness, and a sense of gratitude swept over her. Her simple act of pouring the perfume on Jesus was the start of a life trying to show her thanks. Simon missed it all. Like his Pharisee friends, he thought he'd earn salvation by banking more and more good deeds. Why we give is what really matters to God not the deeds themselves. We can never repay our debt, but God, by His grace, can remove it. What a terrible day it was. I had to push my way through crowds and soldiers, so much taunting, but none of that mattered to me. I wanted to be there for Him. As he hung on that cross, he was giving his life. The least I could do was give him my presence. And after he died, I wanted to go and anoint his body. It was all I could think of doing for him. Mary did go to the tomb to give again. Instead, she received the news that's shaken the world ever since. Jesus is risen. Jesus singled out Mary to be the messenger of this great news. Why? Perhaps because she gave so much without thinking of anything in return. Where should we place our trust for salvation? Mary and Simon show two very different paths. You can bank good deeds, like Simon and the Pharisees, Keep track of every good deed you deposit. Imagine that God is impressed by your numbers. Mary shows the better way. Forgiveness is our only refuge. Gratitude, our only response. Mary saw her mountain of sin wiped away. What followed was a flood of gratitude and a lifetime of giving to her Lord and others to show her thanks. Mary lived to give. Such gifts make all the difference to our Lord, not because He or His Father need them, because they reflect our gratitude and love for Him and our love for one another. Another notable dinner was held not long before Jesus was crucified. In the lamplight, a woman lovingly poured expensive perfume from an alabaster jar on the Lord's head and feet. The disciples rebuked her, but Jesus commended her. She has done a beautiful thing to me. Those are words to bank on. <laughs>